There you go. Moral of the story is don't go to sleep with swords. Yeah, don't go to sleep with swords. Um, If you're drowsy, please, you know, put your swords away. Um, If you're taking NyQuil, put your swords away. Um, Do not operate swords. (laughs) Do not operate swords while under medication. Welcome to Ichimon Japan. I'm Tony and... And I'm Ryan. All right. Again. So this, again, <laughs> again. Yeah, this is a part two. Yeah, of, bonus. Yeah, what is seppuku? We had so much interesting stuff that we wanted to talk about that we thought we'd do a second part. And you could consider this the part three of our trilogy of Japanese intestine content. Trilogy so far. I know, yeah. Trilogy so far. We have to match Star Wars in our like three trilogy series. Gotta get to nine episodes of intestines. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we'll keep on looking for those intestine questions. <laughs> Uh, so uh yeah again uh there's a part one which is do japanese people have larger intestines than westerners do they i don't know you're gonna have to listen to the episode so uh anyway as we teased in the uh first part uh we wanted to talk a little bit about general nogi so nogi is the last name nogi mareske uh and he uh committed uh you would you could say seppuku in, in the general sense although it wasn't the formal edo period seppuku but unofficial um, unsanctioned seppuku true it was unsanctioned however he was a military officer so i guess oh that's true he did have the right to it then yeah at that point true yeah so i guess that's the technicality that says like it kind of is seppuku um i actually we didn't get into it the the more modern like meiji area military people did they need approval too or were they just free to do it when they felt like it you know i i didn't see that in the book i I was i'm not sure yeah i kind of stopped focusing on it after the traditional samurai era guys yeah yeah, that that's a good question, but I I don't know, and I didn't see any mention of that in the um, book. In, in well, he was like uh, a again, general, right? Uh, yeah, he was a general. Yeah, and he, he could probably give own. like authority to himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was of of like samurai stock. He's bushi, he's like samurai. Um, he was born in the Edo period, and he spent like his whole basically adult life, I, pretty much the entire life. There, there's a couple of moments where he didn't, I believe, but um, in the military. And uh, just a reminder. Much of this information that we got from part one and this part mm-hmm. in the in the conversation about General Nogi uh, was from the book Andrew uh, by Andrew Rankin called Seppuku. It's a great book. If you're curious about more of this stuff, go check that out. And for more context on this whole Seppuku thing, go check out part one. So uh, 1912, uh, Seppuku isn't really a thing aside from perhaps the military, but it wasn't really... Japan was trying to be Western, so they were trying to shun these kind of like what the West might think like archaic, barbaric customs. They were trying to be super Western and dress Western and appeal to, you know, the West. So this was a real shocker when uh, in 1912, September 13th, 1912, uh, General Nogi uh, committed Seppuku with his wife. Mm. So uh, he did it in his house. And it was uh, as the funeral procession of Emperor Meiji was in progress. And nobody was expecting this. He said that him and his wife were not feeling well. They weren't going to go to the procession. And it should be noted that he was very close to the emperor. And he was kind of like a, a teacher, uh, mentor to Hirohito, the, the, the next emperor of the Showa period who was of course, you know, world war two and all that, 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 you know, Hirohito is quite well known. Uh, so the story is that uh, during the uh, Satsuma Rebellion, uh, which was in the 1800s, um, late, later 1800s, he was you know, in the military and the regimental colors. So basically like their flag got stolen by the rebels. The flag bearer got killed and Nogi took this like, wow, like it was a huge deal. And, you know, of course, the, the, the colors are the representation of the emperor so it's like a piece of the emperor so it's like a disrespect to the emperor so of course it was a big deal for him and he writes this this letter saying you know i dishonored please let me kill myself and his superior says no we, we please you don't have to do that it wasn't really your fault don't worry about it like but he carries this inside him and then later like you know he feels responsibility for future deaths in, in future battles that, that happened like with um russia um was a huge huge amount of of death and even his sons die in that battle and so he he has the story goes that he has this meeting with the meiji emperor he says please let me kill myself and the emperor says no you have work to do we need you uh but if you feel so strongly that you want to you know commit seppuku uh please wait until after i've died and that's exactly what he did 
So he he cuts himself open. Uh, th- okay, so this is what the kind of records, the autopsy says happened, right? Uh, he cuts himself open first. It's a relatively shallow cut, but of course he's probably bleeding. Uh, I'm sure he is bleeding. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, and then his wife, which accompanies him, uh, well, of course he did the whole poem thing and he, he, he has the, the photo of the emperor in front of him uh, and he does write a death poem, if I remember correctly. Did um, he drink two cups of sake with four sips each? Ah, jeez, I... I don't know if it was four sips, but I do believe he does drink some sake. Okay. Um, it it but, invalidates the whole thing otherwise. <laughs> I do think that happens, but I that I didn't write that down, so I'm sorry. That I might be <laughs> wrong on that. But anyway, he he then stabs his wife more than once. Uh because uh, the the speculation is that he was weakened by the blood loss and his his own mm-hmm. cut. Eventually he gets the heart. So she dies. Before she, before he goes back to finish the deed for himself, he fixes her kimono. He makes sure her knees are, her legs are closed so that she doesn't die in an indecent fashion. And then he sticks the sword in his mouth, goes through it, you know, the back of his neck, it seems, like protrudes like several inches. And that's it. And then later they find him and it's a whole big shocker. And the newspapers, some people go like, oh my God, this is like, you know, we're trying to be civilized. And this is like a symbol of, of the old, like, you know, barbaric sort of samurai way. We have to be more like the Westerners. While others like really say like, oh my God, he's such a warrior. He died. You know, he was carrying this burden with him all this time. Uh, but af- after his death, not not so long after, they end up renaming that area Nogi Zaka right the the hill of nogi um so for the most part it seems like they he's looked at fairly favorably and and for his military career he he is generally looked at you know quite favorably he's an important historical figure and that house ends up becoming uh, a shrine right he gets deified basically uh in in it's a shrine it's an actual shrine and we've been to it right Ryan? yes we have this last july right Yes, yes, last summer, uh, summer of 2019, yes. Yes. Uh, we were there, we, we checked it out, like, I, I found out, it's just a, this little interesting story in history, and I thought we'd, we'd go check it out. So we did, it was, it was a rainy day. <laughs> it was rainy uh, only then, though, right? It, like, cleared yeah. up after that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, any, anything you can say, like, we tried to peek inside, they don't let you in the house, but... Um, yeah. Yeah, they tried the to... Windows the windows window. are screened, but open, so you can see. Not yeah. a lot to see, though. Yeah, no, not really. I mean, but you do see the room where, where he, he did the deed. Yes. Uh, and if I remember correctly, they do give you a little bit more access like once or twice a year, I think, at certain events. Yeah, and I think sometimes they still have the original uh, like sliding door that had blood on it. But when oh, we were there, I oh. believe it was not on display. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it, there's not really that much to see there. Um, it just looks like an old house. <laughs> yeah, it just looks like an old house. There's a toady gate. There's a nice little garden around it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's a nice little peaceful place. Um, so, I mean, if you're curious, it's it's cool to check out. You might want to wait until one of those days where they actually give you more access, though. It uh, doesn't seem to be. I don't. Maybe it's just because it was rainy, but it was mm-hmm. not crowded at all. And some not of the more all. famous Tory places are very, very crowded. So. Yeah, yeah. It's like Meiji Jingu, like a shrine. You know, that's yeah, yeah. One of the big. You want to see like a less mainstream touristy spot. It's an interesting place. Yeah, there was like a, an older guy there like doing gardening or something. Mm. Um, cleaning up the garden or something. But um, yeah, uh, so another thing, two two just last things related to that. One, of course, Nogizaka 46 is the idol group. So it's just interesting that this- Named after this guy. Group is named after the area that is named after this guy that you know killed himself. So it's this weird- I'm place. sure he would be proud. Yeah, I guess so. Huh? Like, idols yay I, I i don't know what to make of that but it's this weird <laughs> thing and then the other thing that is in the andrew rankin book seppuku uh it's in a footnote it's pretty much like right at the end of the book it's like one of the last things you see but it, to me it was one of the most memorable things um so <laughs> uh nogi a man who has seen many 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 men die in his day right thousands probably just you know he's been in war he's seen many men die and one thing that happens when you die uh your bowels release and you you let it out right you let what you had in there out and what he did apparently according to the report and this report the, this part of the report didn't make it into the newspapers this is something that was you know, i wonder why really, yeah it's not publicized uh but apparently it's something that happened he used two cork sized plugs put them in his butt so that there wouldn't be any um leakage i guess you would say and he would die in a more dignified manner is when you say two do you mean he used two or he and his wife both used one 
Uh, I believe the wording makes it sound like he used two. So maybe he didn't use anything for his wife. I, uh, oh, poor, poor woman. She, she didn't die so dignified after all. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> he died double dignified. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I, I, All the dignity for me. I'm not going to poop myself, but I don't care about her as long as she does with her legs clothed. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's that's a thing that happened. Um, but anyway, uh, anything anything else you want to say about Nogi? <laughs> 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 I, I, I think that about covers the main stuff. Yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah. So uh, let's stop here for a second and we'll come back with that other story I teased in the in part one. Have you ever wondered where the heck the word nickel comes from? <laughs> so nickel means cat in Japanese. And I just released the second episode of Japanese Plus Alpha, which delves into this exact topic. So Japanese Plus Alpha is the latest podcast that I've started producing. And Japanese Plus Alpha focuses on the Japanese language. I investigate these little quirks and interesting aspects of the Japanese language. And the latest episode, like I said, is about the word nickel. I spend like almost 30 minutes uh, talking about the various things that I uncovered while doing the research for this topic and I uncovered a whole bunch of really interesting stuff. So if you're interested in that, then please consider becoming a patron over on Patreon. So japankyo.com slash Patreon is where you can go to sign up. This episode I have made available to both the $1 a month arigato tier and the $3 a month plus alpha tier. So whichever one you sign up for will give you access to this episode. Most episodes of Japanese Plus Alpha will only be available to the $3 a month plus alpha tier, but this one is special. And one more thing before we get back to the episode. If you do your shopping on Amazon and you want to support Japankyo, Ichimon Japan, all the stuff that we're doing over here, then make sure to use our affiliate link, japankyo.com slash Amazon. Also, just a reminder, if you're interested in purchasing the book by Andrew Rankin, Seppuku, that's the book that we used for much of the things that we talk about in this two-part series on Seppuku, well, you can also use this link. I will also include an affiliate link in the show notes at japankyo.com slash Ichimon Japan. Part two and part one both have the affiliate link for Seppuku by Andrew Rankin. All right, so japankyo.com slash Amazon. All right, so let's get back to the show. So I, uh, Ryan pointed out something I, I, ha I made a mistake. So after the Meiji period was the Taisho era. Now that Taisho era was pretty short. Um, yes. Yeah. The I believe Showa, it only went to 1926. Yeah. So that's uh, 1912 to 1926. Like fifth, fifth, 14 years, something. Like 14 that? years. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but of course, the Showa Emperor, which is Hirohito, was already born at that point, and Nogi was kind of educating him by then. So um, they they did have that connection. And then when the Taisho era ended, then we get to the Showa era, which is when Hirohito comes into power. He becomes the emperor. Mm. <clears throat> so anyway. On with the, the story that I teased in our previous episode uh, that, as far as I know, has not been translated into English. So, And this is kind of funny, kind of sad, just totally ridiculous um, and kind of mysterious, too. Uh, so apparently there is this uh, samurai. He was born in the Edo period in, is it 1671? Yes, that is correct. Yeah, born in 1671. His name is Matsudaira Tadaaki. And he is the firstborn of the son of the ruler. Uh, his name is Matsudaira Tadamitsu, of the ruler of Nagashima Han in yes. uh, I, the Nagashima Dominion. And that is in Ise no Kuni was the name of the region at the time, which is modern day, like areas of Mie Prefecture, Aichi Prefecture. So uh, apparently uh, his father, Matsudaira Tadamitsu, uh, was kind of feeble-minded kind of dim-witted or something like that like it's, it's kind of vague there isn't much detail but the record which uh, all this was found in this book called Seken Banashi uh, Fubunshi I think um, let me see yes Fubunshu Fubunshu sorry Fubunshu is the name of the book it's an Edo era book that, that compiles different tales and history you know little things um, <clears throat> so apparently uh the dad wasn't particularly smart, it seems, or, or, or sharp in mentally. Um, but Tadaaki, the son, um, was very diligent, very hardworking. He he was good at military tactics and and also literature and the, the books. You know, he was good at both. And uh, I'm just imagining Goku and Gohan now. Yeah, it's kind of the opposite, <laughs> right? <laughs> the no, no, Gohan's the smart one. 
Gohan's the smart. Oh, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. Yeah, it's exactly like that then. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so the son was the smart one and the dad was not so smart. It's speculated that some somehow their relationship deteriorates. Um, and Just like Goku and Gohan. True, there's a point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when when Goku dies and disappears for a long time. <laughs> and Piccolo becomes the new... Anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so... Uh, yeah, so there's it's speculation. We don't really know exactly what happened. But, you know, Tada Aki, the son, reta- remains the diligent, good, smart son... And one day he he's uta uta ut, uta uta ne right yeah um is the utatane. the word uta ne sorry sorry uta 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 ne is kind of like dozing off. For example, if you're sitting on your couch and, and you're dozing off, that would be uta uta ne right. Uh, so uh, he's in the castle and he's kind of just dozing off, and then somehow he he gets his sword and and he he stabs himself like he's going to commit seppuku and then th- this raises a commotion and his retainers like rush in and like what's going on what's going on and and then this guy he's like no no don't worry i'm i'm fine i'm sound of mind i'm shoki right i'm like sound of mind i'm not crazy or anything i'm good i'm good so he they mend him up and he survives but this whole thing of course it's like a disgraceful thing right like you, in in some cases you might have even had to been if you were this guy, you would have had to like go through with it. It's like, this is so shameful. Please kill yourself. Um, and then he, he's, he, he was supposed to be the heir to the dominion of the, the Nagashima uh, Han. But, you know, it's so shameful that he ends up, you know, not being the heir. He, he goes off to his mother's uh, land, which is in, um, where was that? That was in Hyogo, Pref- modern day Hyogo prefecture. Mm. And he lives his days there until the age of 64, where he dies, as far as we know, of just a natural death. Uh, So uh, apparently this guy was perhaps it's speculated that he was just kind of stressed out because he wasn't getting along with his dad. And maybe, you know, he's such a like majime, like serious guy um, that somehow he's fantasizing about being like a good samurai. And then before he knows it, he's like stabbing himself. He's kind of like spaced out. He's on um, what's that called? Like. You know how um, there's that like sleeping medication that, that they tell you like don't drive or don't tweet. <laughs> <laughs> don't tweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know whenever the, like somebody will like tweet out like a racist thing, they'll say like, oh, I was taking what is ah, like Xanax yeah. or something. I, I don't know what something it's called. Something like that. Yeah, I forget what it's called, but I I don't know I don't if think he was. We have it here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He well, definitely not in Japan. Yeah, uh, but uh, maybe he was just like spaced out and 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 he was yeah the, he he ended up stabbing himself. It's just ridiculous. Um, and that's kind of all we know. The story, as far as I know, as far as I was able to dig up, um, th- there's not much more detail than that. But you could basically. But he might say, be the only survivor of seppuku. <laughs> <laughs> there are, there are, yeah, I'm pretty sure there are other ones. Uh, but probably, uh, it actually kind of surprises me that they let him survive. But maybe his his family took pity on him, and yeah. Uh, but uh, apparently, this guy was just kind of spaced out kind of drowsy and he had a sword near him and just stabbed himself for some reason so there you go the story is don't go to sleep with swords yeah don't go to sleep with swords um if you're drowsy please you know put your swords away um if you're taking nyquil put your swords away um (laughs) do not operate swords (laughs) do not operate swords while under medication um if you're stressed out about your dad do not operate your sword um yeah and make sure you if you do um you know get treated right away uh because you you can then run away to your mom's house you know? <laughs> so yeah there you go that is our uh perhaps slightly shorter than usual episode but I, I think that that does it i think we don't have to talk about intestines for a while now right uh, i don't know i hope we bring it back soon yeah well i look if you if anybody finds anything about japanese intestines that they want us to someone will find something yeah oh god oh goodness i'm, I'm scared of what somebody will find but um ichimon at japankyo.com you can you can email us there's no guarantee that we'll do it but we'll definitely <laughs> laugh about it email. probably yeah and we'll we'll talk about it probably so ichimon at japankyo.com so anything else ryan uh, i'm good thanks All for right. listening cool cool yeah thanks everybody for listening um hey leave some reviews subscribe do all that stuff uh it 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 helps the show out and uh you can go to japankyo.com to find all the show notes for everything we've talked about uh a link to seppuku by andrew rankin will be there too all right so see you guys next time bye